Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we have no problems. If you recall, we've been talking about waves, and we talk about waves, we talked about that there's three kinds of waves. We talked about transverse waves, we talked about longitudinal waves, and today we're gonna to talk about the third kind of wave, a standing wave. Now, standing wave sounds like it's standing. It's like not moving, and it, it's moving but not moving. The classic example is the string on a stringed instrument. In a stringed instrument, you have a, a string that's of length L, but when you pluck that string, it makes, it, it oscillates back and forth like this, all right? And, uh, and it's going back and forth. It looks like it's standing, even though it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth really fast, then it looks like it's standing. Now, interestingly enough, and this is a little harder to understand, but when you also pluck that string, something interesting is happening, is that one half of the length, it's also oscillating. All these things are sort of happening simultaneously. And then also you would have it in, I think we, I try and do it in thirds. So this is, you know, the, the edge of the guitar string. So it's the same string. We're looking at the string in, in three different patterns, if you will. And it's going to be, um, I didn't draw that very well, but it'd be thirds. This should be a thirds, perfectly thirds. So this will be at one half. This would be a third and two-thirds. I didn't draw it very well, but they get the idea. And so, and here's something that's interesting about the musical instruments, it's fascinating, is that these sounds are being made when you pluck the instrument. So if you pluck a string, a string on a guitar, then all these sounds are being made. Now this is called the, what's it called? It's called the fundamental. So you music people are gonna love this. This is called the first or the, uh, the second harmonic. And this is the third harmonic. There's also the one that's one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, and et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. And when you listen to these, usually what's happening is you can only hear one of them, one of the harmonics when you're plucking a string, depending upon how the instrument is constructed. One is gonna be the loudest. Usually it's the fundamental one. Uh, and you oftentimes can't hear this. Let's investigate this a little further. So we think about playing a guitar, yeah. This is plays guitar. <laughs> so we've got strings, right? And the strings are a certain length. And if I pluck this uh, string, that's the low E string, it makes an E sound, as it turns out. When we talk about the harmonics, remember I said that all of the frequencies are being played, but we just hear one sound. The way to, for me to actually let you hear the harmonic is if I put my finger over the top of the middle. So if, if we measure the length of the string from here to the very end, the very middle is right here. So this is going to be, I'm putting my finger over one of the nodes and listen to the sound. We're only hearing one of the harmonics. So that sound is being played. I can find another one too, listen. I'm still plucking the same string, but I'm hearing the same sound. Now, if you are a musician, what you can hear is that it's just an octave. You're hearing the same note, but different. Does that make sense? And that's called harmonics. True on every string. And then the key to doing this on a guitar is to hit it exactly at the node. Before we talk some more about how musical instruments work, I think it's important to note that we need to talk about some just to defines. When you are at these places where you have uh, destructive interference, this right here, where the, the wave is not moving at all, it's called a node. So that's a node, that's a node, that's a node. And then the point of maximum height right here, this is called an anti-node. Right? And so would be here and here, and here, I think you get the idea. And maybe a fascinating question you might ask is, you know, if I play a middle C on my guitar, or I play a middle C on a harmonica, or I play a middle C on a piano, or I play a middle C on an oboe, they all sound, they're the same notes. They have the same frequency, but they completely sound different. You know this, if you're a musician, it's like, that sound is so different. But 
why. And it comes down to the harmonics. Different instruments highlight different harmonics. Remember, there's like there's an, almost an infinite number of these. They get weaker typically the further you go down to a third, fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever. And if you're a good musician, you can't just hear a C, but you can hear a C and you can say, that's an oboe. Or that's a C and that's a, that's a guitar. Or that's a violin or a viola or a cello or whatever it might be. Because of the way the instrument's constructed, it gives you different, um, how do I say this? Different uh, emphasis, that's the word I'm looking for, emphasis on which harmonic is coming through the most. And, and, and sound is even more complex than that because honestly, we're actually hearing all these sounds together and we hear one sound. Our brain processes it and says one note. But actually we're hearing like eight different harmonics at the same time, though they are still based upon middle C, if you will, uh, from a note perspective, it's gonna be different. One last thing I think it's interesting when we talk about stringed instruments is in a guitar, if you know that a guitar works, a guitar, all the strings are the same length. There's six strings, if you don't know the guitars or any stringed instruments. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the lengths of the string are exactly the same, but if I pluck this string, this is low frequency and low sound, and this is a high sound. Turns out this is an E, by the way, and this is an E, but this is an octave higher. And uh, what's different is this is a thicker string. And this is a thinner string. All right, and so what causes them to make different notes? Well, the thicker one vibrates slow, slower. So it produces a lower tone. Because the, the, uh, the frequency that the the string makes is a function, a mathematical function, of the thickness of the string, the length of the string, but in the guitar, they make the length of the string the same, true on a violin, et cetera, et cetera. And also, by the way, the tension in the spring. So you can make it higher by tightening the screws on a guitar or a violin for that matter. So interesting enough is that even though the lengths are the same, you say, well, it should all be the same, but they make different tones because we have different thicknesses and we have different tension. Houston. Aren't waves cool? And we're not even done with waves. It's like the introductory unit on waves. We'll see you awesome, amazing students in class.